Hello everyone, this is Betsy from Ideas Times 2. Today I have a tutorial for you. I decided to experiment a little bit with eco dyeing on fabric, and I've never done that before. Um, this technique involves pounding, so it's you need a hammer or a mallet of some kind, and live plants. So I just picked some from my, my garden, um, and I kept them small. These are just little small rectangles, like two or three inches. Um, in length and width, something like that. Um, and so that's what I had to work with and it's the, the pounding technique. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, Cindy has a video, she did that same technique on paper. So I will link her video down below. Also, um, and so you can hear her tips and tricks as well. And then also, she made a digital kit out of those uh, beautiful prints that she made, so I will link that down below as well. So, but let me just go over just a few things. So I made, um, these are the ones that I feel like turned out pretty well. And you can use just leaves, um, like, like these. I think these turned out really well. This is not very dark. These are rose the smaller of the rose leaves that uh, were growing. So they're not very dark. Um, they were young leaves and so I feel like they didn't have as much chlorophyll probably. And then this was like a regular sized Rose of Sharon leaf. So, but the leaves turned out great. Um, these are Black Eyed Susans. I picked the small ones because these are just small pieces of, of uh, fabric so and then these are just some little annuals that I had I don't really know what they are um, this one I just made up with just a few petals from a purple cone flower the purple cone flower is gonna be too big the centers you know as you know stick up really far so I just grabbed a few petals and made my own sort of flower looking thing there at the top and then used some greens um, this one is lavender so I know on Cindy's paper the lavender turned out really well but on my mine they did not turn out so well um, but I don't mind the look of this it's just that you can't see the lavender like separate uh, flower pods like you can't see the separate ones it just kind of all blended together but I still don't mind the look of that Okay, so that's kind of what I used there. So just grab whatever you have, something small. Um, I wanted to show you some mistakes though too, so that you don't grab the wrong thing. Um, so these I consider to be mistakes. Um, now this one probably wouldn't look so bad, but I made, I put the leaf real close to the petal and so it just looks like a glob there and I didn't like that and there's just no definition on these so or that one you know they don't they don't look horrible but I just wanted to show you what I used on these so that you can maybe grab something different than these so this one these two I should say so this one I just grabbed an impatient um, and they're overlapping petals and I just took that thing and just put it right down and there is so much water inside of the petals that it just like splat, splattered sort of flat and so there's no definition on that. So then the next time I, I did it I just grabbed four petals and literally just put the four petals down and it turned out better but I was really unhappy with the leaf that I chose there. So the other thing about impatience or other plants you may choose, this one has a really thick stem. So here's an example. This is a lavender stem. See how thin that is? Those actually worked better for me to have the very thin stems because when you have a thicker stem like this, it's almost, you know, succulent looking or something. Anyway, so when you pound on that, it just splatters just like the, the little flowers did. So that one, that one didn't work too well for me. Here's another example of something um, that is this one right here, which I consider a mistake, but just because it doesn't have definition, it sort of looks like a blob. That's these types of flowers. So if you have something with a lot of overlapping petals, it's just, it's not gonna give you definition. It'll give you color, 
<laughs> so I just took one of these little spikes and I just thought they were so pretty. I'm like, ooh, if that turns out, that's going to be so cool. But it, it was not cool. Not cool at all. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know why my my lavender, of course, lavender is a spring flower. So if I would have had, maybe if I would have had, you know, the early spring flowers on that, I just have some real kind of late spikes that bloom so maybe that's what the problem was I don't know on that but um, I was going to show you an example here too on these let me grab my my bag and show you what I'm talking about so for example this is a Rose of Sharon now it's huge right I probably wouldn't use this one for this size project but see how it has lots of overlapping petals Something like that is not going to give you definition. You're going to have to either like splay it out like this or use the separate petals. Look at when you splay it out like that. Isn't that pretty? I bet on a larger piece of paper that might be um, really pretty. I still think you might have to remove some of the petals though because it's going to get real juice, juicy. <laughs> real juicy. So something like that is probably not going to work on this tiny project. Oh, and I have a little bug. Always great. Those Rose of Sharon always have little bugs. Okay. Got the bugs. Alright, so I'm going to put aside these, um, these juicier ones. Alright, so now, um, what am I going to do with these? Well, I'm probably going to make pockets, tags. Um, I thought it would be really cute to put these in a collage. Um, and put them on a cover. So this one I've already prepared. I, it is a little bit wrinkly. Um, I did heat set it. I, f I feel like that's going to um, help with keeping the color in there. But it's not as if we're going to be washing it or anything. But um, So I just put some wonky stitching and I made sure to rip the edges of this muslin. I just think it's going to be cute on on a book or even a smaller book. Just put one right in the middle. I think it'll be so cute. So pockets, tags you know, multiple, multiple ideas you can do with it. All right, so I think that's all I need to say, I think. So, also what I did was, so next I, <laughs> I'll show you how I, how I did it. And since I had success with this one, and I didn't have much to choose from in my yard, so but since I had success with this, I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these on camera. So I'm gonna just sorta, of, I tried to sorta of spread things out and then this, instead of putting it on sideways like this, it's just gonna be a big glob. I'm gonna put it flat like, like this. So it's actually gonna be facing down and away from me, but it's gonna, it's going to, uh, be single layer of petals. If I put it like this, then you're going to have multiple layers of petals and it's going to get uh, kind of juicy and, and turn into a big blob of color. So, so I'm going to put that flat, as flat as I can on here. Obviously it's not going to, it doesn't have to be 100% flat, but flatten it out as much as you can. I'm going to probably take a few of these leaves out just so I can get more definition from the leaves. And for these small projects, really having smaller leaves is a better a better plan. I wasn't happy with some of those where I picked giant leaves. Okay, so I'm going to do it something like that. Then what I was doing is grabbing a piece of scratch paper. Now, I didn't try other pieces of fabric, which you could try and maybe well, on camera, try tried to put another piece of paper on top or fabric on top so that you could get almost like two images. But I did put paper on to protect the f the flower from the hammerhead because if you just do it like this, then you're going to get petals and stuff sticking onto your hammerhead. So I put a layer of something in between, and I just was using paper. And look, I got I definitely will be able to use these for collages. They. Um, most of them came out so cute and um, you can actually see the lavender a little bit better on there so real pretty uh, images not all of them turned out but 
that you can see those can be used as well so that's that's kind of a cool that's kind of a cool sort of um, additional project you can get out of this so just a little scratch of paper and I put it over the top and I just pound it you don't have to like hammer it to death or anything like that and I'm really trying to be careful because I don't want you to be overwhelmed with uh, the noise here but now so I'm not seeing any color coming through on the paper. A lot of times I was seeing color come through. So I'm not sure how we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is turn the whole thing over and take a peek at the fabric to see if any color's coming through, and it is. I think I'm just being very cautious because I don't want you to, <laughs> I don't want you to listen to that. So what I'm going to do is turn it over carefully and there's a little bit more. So the other thing I did too was, um, was, was on this side checking to see which uh, parts needed more pounding. All right, looks like maybe just the stem if I can get the stem. All right, so now you can see there's an image there. That's the back, right? So just peel this off. Look, we got a nice little print on there. And then peel this off. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit of work to peel it off. But I found that if you are having trouble peeling it off, just let it dry because it is, it's wet. You know, you're getting the water out. And that's what it'll look like. Um, but if you... If it's stuck to the fabric, like you pounded really hard and it got stuck, just wait till it dries and then you can scrape it off with, you know, a tweezer or something. Um, but I would definitely run, recommend letting it dry because um, if you don't, the chlorof you're going to be spreading chlorophyll when you, when you try to rub it. Okay, so that one turned out great. I love that one. So I thought we would do another one. And I've got... I've got this little one and this doesn't have any leaves so I'm going to steal some leaves from and maybe maybe a stem if I can get it from one of my other plants here I was hoping those little rose leaves would work because they have such a nice shape and they were smaller but just wasn't working for me so some of this is going to be experimentation too with different plants that you have. Okay, so this one is is quite um, quite has has quite a uh, a large center too, um, but that was working okay. That was working. That part was working okay for me. Um, not like the purple cone flower. That one is huge. Has a huge ball in the center. So you can see how this came out, the brown still uh, printed on there. So, but I am going to cut it really close to the sepal there. And this should come, this should come out pretty well. You wouldn't necessarily have to put leaves with this. You could just center this and put it in the middle. Let's just do that. Yeah, let's put some green. I like green on there if I can figure out how to do this well yeah we'll just put it in the center we'll just put it in the center okay and then let me grab another piece of paper excuse me I gotta rip, rip some off okay now this one's gonna take a little bit of pounding you could also try to remove some of that stuff but I was hoping to get this, this did leave a little highlight, sort of, there, right there, but I don't mind that. But if you do that too much, I think you're going to get the white in the middle. The white will be in the middle, so I'm pounding down that center, and then I'm just going to go around on the petals. 
I am so sorry about the noise. I don't think my vid video editing has the noise removal feature, so I think that's going to be in there. Okay, so you can see where the yellow is starting to come through, but I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at it from this side and pound on this side. These are a little bit more challenging because of that huge center that we have, but I think it's worth it. It's real cute. It's not quite... I think it's just because I'm trying to not make noise for you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see what this looks like. Another thing I did was there was one time, I can't remember which flower it was, that didn't turn out uh, very well there, but no problem. Where it didn't turn out too well, but I went back in and added a petal and just pounded the petal in on the back, on the, doing, using the same method, just put the paper over it and just pound it. Okay, so, and there's that. So this I could fill in maybe with a few more petals here. So, let me see if I have another one real quick. Well, let me just, let me just use this. Just so you can get the idea. So, just put another petal. And maybe another one. Oop. Maybe not sticking out that far. So another petal. And we'll get another one maybe down here. Okay. Alright, and then do a little bit more pounding. And you'll have to use a fresh one. But that's what I, I was just gonna show you the method. So just just Add, add a few more things if you want to. Maybe you wanted to add more leaves or whatever. Just redo the whole thing. Put them down. Put your paper over and then just pound again. So so you'll, you get the idea there, but still it wasn't too bad. And I'm gonna, I have some brown specks in here from that center, so I'll have to let that dry before I get that off. Otherwise I'll probably smear brown on the petals. So anyway, that is it. I think that is it for today. really want to get another eco um, staining video in if I can before all of our plants are gone. I can't quite picture that yet though because it is super hot so I can't quite picture actually the weather being cool yet. <laughs> Sometimes, oh, this, so this kind of reminds me, sometimes you'll, you're going to like the back better. So this is the back of this one and that's the front. So you can just decide on that. Um, and then this one, this one I had just used one petal and I didn't really like the look of it. So I, I went ahead and, like I showed you, just added a petal and then pounded with a piece of paper over the top and just have another little piece there, which I was thinking I might put another one over here too. So anyway, lots of fun and I'm excited to get these on a journal cover or a tag. I think they're going to be so cool. So that's it for today. I will um, leave those links that I uh, that I talked about at the beginning. I'll leave the links down below and where you can find us as well. So please give us a thumbs up and a positive comment would mean so much. And um, we've got a Facebook, Instagram. I'll leave all those all that information down below. Thank you everybody. Take care and we'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.